how to build a container image using build packs. When you first start out building container images, you probably start out using Docker build. However, did you know that there is another tool that will allow us to build container images and even better, we don't have to create a Docker file. That tool is called Pack. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.322.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has both Docker installed and the Pack binary. The repository that we're going to be looking at in this video is linked down in the description. And let's go ahead and take a look at that repository right now. I have a very basic Spring Boot Hello World type app here, and I've got three Jenkins files. Let's first take a look at Jenkins file-1. This is our starting point. We're just going to be doing a Maven W clean install. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. Let's create a new job. We're going to call it Build Packs. We'll click on Pipeline, and then we'll click on OK. Down in our definition, we'll change it from SCM. Our SCM is Git. The repository URL, I will copy that from over here. And our Jenkins file is going to be Jenkins file 1, but I first have to specify the branch as main. And Jenkins file dash 1. Let's click on Save and then click on Build Now. And if we take a look at the output from this, our job built just from the Maven W clean install, everything appears to have worked out OK. So this first Jenkins file was just for doing a sanity check to where we made sure everything worked as expected. Now let's go back over to our repository and take a look at Jenkins file 2. And this is where we introduce the pack binary. Again, I've already installed pack on my agent, so I can just call it directly from my command line. What we'll do is we'll say pack version. We'll take a look at pack report. We're going to output our environment variables. And the reason why we're doing that is we are going to be reusing one of our environment variables, git underscore commit. So when we create this image, which we'll look at this in just a moment, the tag for it will be the git commit. Now let's take a look at the command line that we're going to be running. I'm saying pack build. I'm specifying the image name. I'm also explicitly setting the path. By default, the path is in the current directory. So when we check out our repository, that would be the current directory. So I'm being a little redundant here. That's OK. And then I'm also specifying the builder. And the builder is the image that we're going to be using in order to build our application and create the container image. So let's go back over to our controller and let's change our Jenkins file to Jenkins file dash two. Click on save and click on build now. And now that's finished, let's scroll back up top and understand what happened when we ran this command. So if we keep scrolling here, we can see with pack we're running version 0240. The report just gives us some more information about the version and the OS and the architecture, the default lifecycle versions, supported platform APIs, and also there was no config to be found, so it just reported there. So think of version as, here's my version number. Report is, give me some more information about this version of pack that I have. I just output the environment variables just because I wanted to ver verify that my git commit was here. And we can see that the first seven of this is 10DA3. That's OK. Just keep that in mind. And then we run our command pack build. We specify the tag name. And we can see here, here's our 10DA, the path, and then the builder. And again, the builder image is what's being used to actually create the container image for our application. Since this had not been pulled, it pulls the image, takes a few moments. Once that completes, it's figuring out, OK, well, what do I need to do? And it's going through and checking. It's like, oh, I'm using Maven, so I need to get the Maven runtimes in order to actually build this application. It also saw within my POM XML that I'm using Java 11, so it downloaded Java 11 for me. And once it got everything downloaded and in place, it created a Maven W run line for us. In fact, it's smart enough to know to use Maven W instead of just use Maven. So it created this one command line. Remember in our Jenkins file one, we specified Maven W clean install. Here, 
by default, I didn't have to write anything. Think back to our Jenkins file. My Jenkins file is just pack build, give it a tag name that I want it to be, and the builder. And I also went ahead and specified the path as well. This is all that I created in my Jenkins file. When we look at the output, I didn't specify anything for MavenW. So it did this itself. Once it finished building, it went ahead and created the image for me. It set labels on the image and then put our application inside of this image. The key part here, going back to our repository, my repository does not have a Jenkins file. I am taking what is the opinionation of the build pack via the pack CLI and having it just create the image for me. Now I have the image, but just having the image doesn't help me out a lot. I need to be able to pull that image from a registry. So how do I go ahead and make a change to my Jenkins file to go ahead and publish that image? If we take a look at Jenkins file three, it looks almost exactly the same as my Jenkins file two, except for just a few things. I now have an environment variable with a credential. I am logging in to Docker Hub. I'm going to use Docker Hub as my registry. You could use any registry that you want. The one thing to keep in mind is Pack is using Docker under the hood for authenticating against the registry. So this is why I'm specifying Docker login and also Docker log out. So if you've watched any other videos about how to interact with Docker Hub, that part is exactly the same. I need credentials. And in fact, if you haven't done that before, you can take a look under your Docker Hub credentials, go to your name, look at account settings, and then under security, you would create an access token. And at this point, I already have an access token created and configured within my controller. But what do I do inside of my Jenkins file? All I have to do is add in dash dash publish by setting up the credential, logging into Docker or whatever registry that you're using, by adding the publish, at this point, once the build is complete, it will go ahead and push the image to that registry. Before we go back to our controller, let's go back to Docker Hub. Let's look at my account one more time. And right now you can see at the very top, I have a Jenkins example APKO. That's the last image at the top of the list. So keep that in mind. Let's go back over, let's modify our job to run Jenkins file dash three and click on build now. And now that this is completed, let's go ahead and scroll back up and take a look at what changed here. If we take a look at where we did our Docker login, that's new for this run through. Here's our pack build with our dash dash publish included. When it was pulling the image, it already had the image this time because I'm on the same agent. So that was a lot faster. We do our build, all of that's normal. We see our Maven clean package line, just like we did before. We do our build. Now I want to call out one thing that I forgot to mention before we started this. Notice that it says saving Docker IO slash Darren Pope slash Spring Boot Hello World. If we take a look at our Jenkins file, one thing I failed to call out is I needed to fully qualify the registry tag within my tag name. So in this case, since I was pushing to Docker Hub, I went ahead and specified docker.io, which is the registry name for that tag. So I had to not only add in dash dash publish, but because I was pushing to Docker Hub, I needed to also add in docker.io to the existing tag that I had. So once we take a look at this part, we can see, oh, okay, the images right here, successfully built the image and then it logged out. Well, let's go take a look at it over in Docker Hub. So if I come here, do a refresh, what we're going to see is that we now have Spring Boot Hello World. And if we take a look at it, the tag that we have is the 10DA3F5. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment. Click on that subscribe button and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBeast TV.
Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.